Hi, George here. And what we're going to do in this video is do a pre-use check on a fully circuited servo eye ventilator. Now, some of the things that you're going to need in order to do this pre-use check is, of course, the servo eye ventilator. You're also going to need one of these tubes right over here that typically comes with the servo eye when you purchase it, as well as something to plug off the circuit when it's required, like a blue cap circuit cap like this one right over here. If you don't have this cap that came with the brand new circuit, you can always use a black stopper that if you've got one of those things like a test tube stopper uh, or you can also use an infant endotracheal tube patient connector. Oh, yeah, the patient connector with the infant endotracheal tube. Just simply tie the endotracheal tube in a knot so it plugs off. Anyways, let's take a look at the servo eye and do this pre-use check. Now, with all ventilators, before I do a pre-use check on the ventilator, first of all, I make sure the ventilator is properly circuited, and then I also make sure before I put that circuit on the ventilator that the ventilator is clean and wiped down because you don't want any bugs from the previous person passed on to the next person that is going to be placed on the ventilator. So check the circuit over, make sure it's, it's good on the ventilator, and then when you've got the circuit good on the ventilator, go around, check all the connections, make sure the connections are nice and tight. So I'm going to go back to the ventilator here right now. I'm not going to worry about where the gas comes out of the ventilator and where the gas goes back into the ventilator right over here because I know that I'm going to have to take those off right away. But I'm going to check every other connection to make sure that they're nice and tight. So this one right over here, and make sure that's nice and tight. That plug's sitting in there properly. That temperature sensor for the pot right over there. I'm going to go back to the patient Y. Make sure everything is properly positioned here. I'm going to tighten the inspiratory limb to the patient Y, the expiratory limb to the patient Y, and the MDI port. That's right over there. Make sure that's nice and tight. And that looks like, oh yeah, the temperature sensor port right over here at the top on the inspiratory limb. Make sure that's nice and tight as well. So now that I've checked the circuit, everything looks good. The uh, connections are nice and tight. I've got the ventilator already plugged into the pneumatics as well as the electrical. What I need to do to do at this point in time is turn the ventilator on. And that is done, remember, at the back of the ventilator, right over here behind this window. Where is it? That's the on off switch. So I'm going to turn the ventilator on. You can kind of see the screen powers up. I guess we'll take the camera off the tripod now. Do, do, do. Come on, camera. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, let's see. What does it say on here? Do you want to start the pre-use check? Yes, we do. Now these are all the things that it's going through. Now when you're doing the pre-use check, the ventilator pretty much tells you what you need to do. And this first thing it says is connect the test tube between the inspiratory outlet and expiratory inlet. That means take this thing, that long tubing there, it's about 18 inches, and connect that up from the inspiratory side to the expiratory side. So you're taking the circuit off the ventilator from the inspiratory port and the expiratory port. Now because the circuit is a clean circuit, you don't want to contaminate it, so try to find a place to put the inspiratory side so it doesn't get contaminated. Place it right down there somehow. And the expiratory limb, you can simply hold on to it or place it in a position where it's not going to get contaminated. Okay, so once we've done that, we need to connect this tubing up to here. So we're going to take the one end and put it on the inspiratory port. Now it's a good idea that your ventilator is in fact got the wheels blocked off so it doesn't move and I've got the wheels locked so they don't move. Anyways, that's what that first thing's asking you to do is take this tubing, connect it up from the inspiratory port to the expiratory port. Once you've done that, hit OK and it starts going through all the rest of the test. And you don't really have to do much except 
follow the instructions that are displayed on the screen. So right now it's working on the gas supply test. Seems to be working fine. That has passed. Now it's taking, taking a look at the internal leakage test. So it's checking the innards, if you will, of the gas flow and the tubes inside the ventilator itself. That passed. Now it's going on to the pressure transducer test. Keeps on going in and out of focus because I'm holding on to it. Safety valve test now. Still running that. You can see it's making a lot of sounds when it's doing these tests to indicate that it is in fact working. Okay, the safety valve test is passed now. It's doing the oxygen cell sensor test. This is where we need that elevator music like they have on uh, Jeopardy playing in the background. Now while it's doing that test, just one thing that I forgot to show you on the ventilator before. This servo eye ventilator also happens to have a nebulizer port right over here. Now this is a nebulizer port, it says neb there, the nebulizer port that is specific for ultrasonic nebulizers that servo company made for this particular ventilator. So you can't attach oxygen tubing, so I'll say that again, you cannot attach oxygen tubing to there or any other, other type of uh, electronically powered nebulizer. It has to be that servo ultrasonic nebulizer. And I didn't mention anything about the humidifier on the previous video because um, it's not a servo humidifier and we would expect that all the ventilators would have a humidifier on them anyways. Now getting back to the self-test, still doing the same thing. Now it's doing the battery test and it says here, one or more batteries need to be replaced. Check batteries and status for more information. So all we have to do is hit OK because we already know our batteries have an issue with this ventilator. Now it says unplug the power cord. So we go over here, unplug the power cord. Watch what it says now. Please reinsert the power cord. Go back over here and let's reinsert the power cord. Connect the circuit and block the Y piece. So it's telling us now to reconnect the circuit to the ventilator. So all you have to do is simply take that tubing off the inspiratory port, remove it from the expiratory port as well. So we're gonna get rid of this. Well, we're not gonna get rid of it. We're just gonna simply put it on a bench. And now we're gonna reconnect the circuit. So I'm gonna take the expiratory side and place it back on the expiratory cassette, like so. And then the inspiratory one on the inspiratory side, like so. Make sure they're nice and tight. And again, this is where it helps to have the wheels locked on the ventilator. There, it's nice and tight, both are nice and tight. Block the Y piece, so I'll get my circuit plug. I'm gonna put that on there, like so. Make sure that's nice and tight on there. Again, I'm doing this one-handed. It's easier with two hands. Come back to our monitor and now say, okay. Now this is a main one, because what it's doing right now is it's pressurizing this external circuit. So it's filling it up full of gas and it's making sure that it doesn't have any leak or it has a minimal leak and then it's also checking to see what the tubing compliance is. And the next thing it asks on the screen is, do you want to compensate for compressible volume? You say yes because that helps to compensate for the tubing compliance factor of the circuit. You can also see the next thing after the patient circuit test, it says, why sensor test not performed in yellow? The servo knows that we don't have the, the uh, neonatal or neo circuit adapter uh, right over here for the neo circuit or the infant circuit that we have on the ventilator, so it doesn't bother doing that test. It's not connected. And the last thing it says is alarm state test passed. So if we look at our ventilator here, everything has passed the pre-use check. All we have to do now is hit Okay, it goes back to this screen that says, do you want to delete the patient data trend logs and event? Yes, if you're gonna be doing it on a new patient or setting this ventilator on a new patient, hit no if you wanna keep that data from before. So we're gonna hit yes. The ventilator goes back in the st standby screen and now what you can do is just simply go to the mode selection menu and then decide what mode you wanna put your 
ventilator into and start programming it for your, your patient. And that is in essence, 10 minutes later, how you do a pre-use check on a ventilator. So we'll close that, accept that, ventilator's back in standby. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do a pre-use check on a servo eye ventilator. Put that back in the, there. That's how you do the pre-use check on a servo eye ventilator. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If you liked it, hit like. If you didn't like it, thumbs down you didn't like it. I hope you have a good day. And I hope this is a good introduction for you into your fascinating knowledge and, and study and operation of mechanical ventilations, life support systems to keep patients alive in intensive care units, operating rooms, post-op recovery areas, emergency units, and anywhere else. They're of value for patient care and safety. Take care. Hope you have a great day.